Well, in this video, we're going to review the methods that astronomers use to find the distances to galaxies. The distance is a very important number. You know, it's needed for making the graph of Hubble's Law with the distance on the horizontal axis. It's needed to understand how much energy a galaxy is uh, uh, putting forth. It's needed to uh, measure the size of a galaxy, the physical dimensions of a galaxy. So lots of uses for distances, and astronomers have put forth a great deal of effort to come up with the methods to determine distances to galaxies. So they're very, very far away, of course, the ones that we're uh, very interested in. We're interested in everything in the universe, probably. But uh, the galaxies that are very far away bring us to the early universe, and uh, there's some different things happening in those galaxies compared to the galaxies that are close to us that we observe in the present age. So the concept to how to get to the distance is a ladder. Uh, if you're going to climb to the roof of a building, uh, a house, let's say, uh, you start on the first rung, then you go to the second one, the third one, the fourth one. You work your way up to the more distant location on the roof one rung at a time. This concept is, it's not exactly uh, the way it works, but it's very close that there is something called a distance ladder of standard candles, and there are different brightness, true brightness to these standard candles. The ones that are dim, we use those close by us, but then we use them to uh, calibrate the brightness of more distant standard candles. So. Here's sort of a, a graphic of this. We're using a ladder to get out to the more distant objects. Now, there are not this many rungs on the, uh, the distance ladder, and there are various versions of distance ladders. We're going to simplify things just a little bit. But our overall concept here, there are places in the universe where there are two different types of standard candles. For example, Cepheid stars and Type 1a supernova would be in the same galaxy. Um, that gives an opportunity for one standard candle, a known standard candle, to calibrate the new one. So let's suppose that we uh, can find the distance to the new standard candle because we have a known standard candle in the same vicinity. Okay, So we use the known standard candle. We measure its apparent brightness. We know its true brightness. We then calculate the distance, astronomers calculate the distance, to the new standard candle. Um, the apparent brightness of the new standard candle is measured, and then astronomers can calculate the true brightness, the true brightness of the new standard candle. Um, so that's our method. Well, the distance ladder is assembled, one rung at a time, with the rungs that are close to the Milky Way galaxy, close to the Sun even, um, being done first, determine their brightness, and then use these known standard candles to find the distance to the new standard candle. Again, measure the apparent brightness of the new standard candle, and then we can calculate the true brightness of the new standard candle, and then we can use it further away from the Milky Way galaxy. This will be a, a brighter standard candle. and allows astronomers to calculate a distance to objects that are more distant than they could uh, calculate with the old standard candles, the first ones. So an example would be uh, use the Cepheid stars, assuming that they've been calibrated and they're a known standard candle. Uh, use the Cepheid stars to measure the period of the Cepheid variation that gives its luminosity from the calibration of these stars. And then the distance to the galaxy can be determined. We measured, the astronomers measure the apparent brightness of nova and supernova in that galaxy. The distance is known for, through the Cepheid stars. The apparent brightness is measured at the telescope. And then astronomers can calculate the luminosity for nova and supernova. Um, and these become the new standard candle that can go further out and can be used to calibrate other standard candles brighter standard candles, um, although the Type 1a supernova are, are fairly bright. I should mention here, one big purpose of the Hubble telescope, 
And in 2015, they're celebrating the 25th anniversary of the Hubble telescope uh, being in orbit around the Earth. But one big use of the Hubble telescope was to give a better calibration for the Cepheid stars. So there was a slight revision, and uh, it turns out there is some a little variation, a little correction needed for the period luminosity diagram, and that's been done. We won't get into the technical details, but the Hubble telescope has improved our knowledge of distances in the universe. Here's a little graphic that illustrates uh, kind of the, the scheme of things again. Uh, the Earth, the Sun, back here. And we see Cepheid uh, variable stars in a galaxy where we can determine its distance through some other means. Um, we'll get to that in just a minute. But then we find uh, a cluster of galaxies where there are Cepheids and Type 1a supernova. The Type 1a supernova are calibrated and now can be used to give us the distance to very remote galaxies. So distance ladder, a dimmer standard candle in the same location as a brighter new standard candle. Uh, the dimmer standard candle gives us distance. Astronomers can then calculate the true brightness of the new standard candle. Um, so here are some, this is a, an abbreviated list. But uh, the first distance that's crucial in getting things started is the size of the Earth's orbit. This is needed to calculate directly the distance to nearby stars using the parallax method. So you might want to uh, do a little reading on your own on that, the parallax method. Uh, the Earth moves from one side of the Sun to the other, you know, six months around its orbit. And the nearby stars shift a little bit on the sky on where they're apparently located. That amount of shifting directly relates to how far they are from the Earth, from the Sun. So we get uh, direct measurement. This first one is kind of the first rung on the ladder, this parallax. Then the stars have a spectral type, you know, G2 and a class, 5 or 2 or 1, if they're a supergiant. Uh, and these two pieces of information can be used to give the luminosity of a star and allow distance to be calculated. We have the Cepheid stars. Again, period and luminosity are related for the Cepheid stars. It's easy to measure the period for one of these stars as long as you can isolate it as a single star. Um, but you measure the period, that gives you the luminosity. And then the Cepheid variables are useful in calibrating the uh, type 1a supernova brightness. Some other uh, distance uh, methods you might read about, a main sequence fitting for clusters of stars, um, the, the raw HR diagrams for one cluster versus another, they won't fall on top of each other, the main sequence, uh, due to distance and making uh, the more distant cluster dimmer, uh, but uh, that can give a clue as to how far away the cluster is. The novae, uh, that, uh, you know, these explosions on the surface of white dwarfs. Uh, the RR Lyrae stars, again, there's a, uh, a light curve uh, variation. And the RR Lyrae are not quite as useful as the Cepheids because the RR Lyrae stars are dimmer. Um, the average brightness of globular clusters around a distant galaxy. Um, the second brightest galaxy in a cluster of galaxies, just to remove the outlier of some giant uh, galaxy. And there are some other methods as well. So here's a chart of some of these other methods. I hope this is not overwhelming. Again, for my class, um, I'm just going to ask you to use this list. The size of the Earth's orbit would be the first distance that's important. Um, using parallax to calculate distances to nearby stars would be kind of the second rung. Spectro spectroscopic parallax would be the third rung, uh, getting distance based on the um, true brightness of the star revealed by the spectral type and class. And this is calibrated by uh, doing parallax measurements for many stars and getting a true luminosity for a certain spectral type and class. Then the Cepheid stars, period luminosity relationship, the type 1a supernova, the uh, supernova that occurs when a white dwarf exceeds the 1.4 mass of the sun limit. Um, but there are others here, and you know, getting more technical, what I'd have you observe is that 
you know, 1,000 parsecs here, that's about 3,000 light years. We use these methods, 10,000, 100,000, 100 kiloparsecs, 100,000 parsecs, megaparsecs, so we're getting more distant, and there's some other relationships, but here's the Type 1A supernova. It uh, provides um, very good information for a, uh, uh, the distant galaxies. Um, our local group of galaxies, the Hubble Space Telescope uh, measurements of Cepheid stars, uh, large Magellanic Cloud Cepheid stars, Cepheid stars in clusters in uh, the Milky Way galaxy. But, so we have uh, some other technical uh, methods of determining distance that I am not going to cover. Um, here's a, a supernova in uh, NGC 2770, a galaxy. And you can see how bright it is compared to the nucleus of the galaxy. It's brighter than the nucleus of the galaxy. And then you can see a dimming over time uh, going from early January into early February. But uh, these supernova can be isolated, can be observed in the galaxies. And then we can calculate the distance to this galaxy. Another supernova here. Um, there's some other foreground stars in this photo. but this star is at the uh, is inside this galaxy associated with this galaxy and uh, allows that distance to be calculated so you should write down some questions about the distance ladder the distance ladder astronomers build on knowledge of the close by objects being used to calibrate the true brightness of more distant objects then those objects become the, the way to calibrate the brightness of even more distant objects. So going up a ladder, it's not circular reasoning. It's very sound uh, scientific process. Write down some questions and uh, ask your instructor.